Hey, are you looking to find ways to get your prayers answered and to see results in your life? Then stay tuned. Hey everybody, it is Kim Yetta with Kim Yetta Connects. I am so happy that you are here. Here at Kim Yetta Connects, you know it, we live free by faith, always on fire for Jesus. I am so thrilled that you're here. And of course, you heard the introduction to this video. How do you get results? How do you get your prayers answered? Now listen to this. I'm going to be honest with you. I can't answer the mystery of prayer because that is in the heavenlies. All right. That is between uh, Jesus, the Holy Spirit and God and his holy will. So I don't have any kind of magic pill. But what I can tell you is I can tell you um, something that I've done that I've seen results in my life. Now, I've got to preface this video with this because I want to be very, very careful because this video is not about name it and claim it. Like, that's it. That's my house. I, I, that's it. It's mine. Right. So there are people that believe in that theology and I don't mock it in any way. That is that. Right. That's my husband and that's it. Hey, more power to you. But then there's this theology that says that we're all supposed to be penniless and broke and sell all of our clothes and go and go be on missions and have nothing. I have nothing wrong with that particular theology as well. I'm not here to take a position. I'm here to share with you my experiences and seeing results. First of all, let's be real. That pause was for a reason. I love Jesus with my whole heart. And I hope that the people watching this video love Jesus as well. We have to live here on earth. We have to get up and go to work every day. We have to be in relationship with people. We have to pay our bills. We have to live our lives. We have to take care of our kids. We have to experience all these things. So if we pretend that all we gotta do is get up and pray, read scripture, go to church, sing in the choir and be done and that we're so fulfilled, that's a lie. I'm sorry. I'm sorry that, that that's untrue. I want to have a great marriage. I want to have wonderful children that love God. I want to live in a nice home that I enjoy. I, I want to um, be able to help my family members when they need it. I want to do that. I want to be able to take my kids on vacations um, before they're gone and off on their own. Those are things that I want to be able to do. And there's nothing wrong with that. And anybody that says that that's wrong as a Christian, I need you to tell me where that is in the Bible. Sure. The Bible is clear for the, for the love of money is the root of all evil. So this video is not a video to contend any of those theologies. This video is to share with you kind of some things that I do in order to see results. But at the end of the day, it's all about my relationship, your relationship with Jesus Christ. If you are praying and praying and praying for something and you have not seen the manifestation of it yet, then there's something deeper that you need to dig into in your walk with God to say, okay, God, I've been praying. If you are a single woman and you've been praying to be married and you've been praying 30 years to be married and you are keeping yourself pure and keeping yourself holy and you're still not married, then it is, okay, God, I'm believing you for a spouse and a mate, but until you send that husband to me, then what would you have of me? You understand what I'm saying? That is a different posture from God has not brought my mate and I'm just going to keep praying and I'm just going to keep believing. Yeah, yeah, I, I am going to keep praying and I am going to keep believing and I am going to keep confessing my word, but my heart is humbling myself to God. So what do I do? Well, what I have here for you is something I created in 2015 and it has the house that I asked God for. It has a private study 
to write books and um, pray. It has the kind of kitchen I wanted. It has a stone fireplace. It has stuff like that. Now, it has a picture of me when I was about 22 years old, when I was a size six. I have that. I'm working on that. Uh, but it has all these things that I started praying over. So here's what I did. I first prayed. I said, God, I want to write down the things that I'm asking you for. And if there's anything that I write down that's not you, remove it from my heart. Two, I looked up pictures that as closely represented what I was asking God for. And I wrote them out, laminated them, talked with my family about some things, got some input, made out a list, laminated that, and I came up with 2015. These are some primary things I'm asking God for some big, big stuff. So I laid that out. Three, I got scriptures. I got into God's word and I started praying over it. And I asked the Lord, um, remove, remove, remove anything from my heart that would be corrupt in nature. Remove anything that can cause selfish ambition or vain conceit. It says that in the word. And I begin to pray it. And I said, God, I want to delight myself in you so you can give me the desires of my heart. Psalm 37, 4. I began to pray John 15, 7. Lord, if I abide in you, your words abide in me, I ask what I will and it will be done. Remember, I'm yielding to God. I'm saying, God, these are the things I'm praying for. I'm presenting them to you. I'm believing Lord Jesus. The Bible says in Proverbs 16, commit thy way to the Lord and your plans will succeed. And I had all of these scriptures and I would take them to God and I would talk to the Lord about it. There are some things that God removed from my heart over time, but there are other things that just stayed there. They stayed there. He didn't change my heart about certain things and my heart to stay right asking him, God, will you do this? This is something I'm asking you for. Again, these were not needs because there's a difference between praying for wants and needs. Sure, I don't need a stone fireplace. I need to be able to pay my bills. I need to have water. I need to have clothes. Those are needs. You have people in other countries that have needs. Uh, you have missionaries that have certain needs. So I want to be clear. These were just wants. These were just wants. Most of us in the Western world, we have a lot of wants. And it's okay as long as if it's not misguided. The Bible says in James that you have not because you ask amiss. And I just said, God, these are things that I'd like to have in my life. But if they're not your will, I can easily just throw it away. Well, four years later, after praying, seeking him, um, God provided all of those things on that list I just threw down because I was willing to throw it down if I had to. He provided all those things. Now, I'm not a size six. Lord help me. I'm not a size six, but I am working on that. But God did it. But that's just, that's just one thing, one little sheet. People who know me know that I have seen amazing manifestation in my life that a lot of people don't see in 10 years. Boom, one after the other. God answers my prayers. He does. Not because I'm so special, not because I'm Miss Holy Roly Mama. Mm -mm. Nope. I believe it's because I'm willing to let him take it all away. Because it's all about him at the end of the day. See, I wasn't holding on to what I wanted so much that I, it would devastate me if I didn't get my stone fireplace. No. I'll be fine. I'll be fine with none. But I sure am glad you gave it to me. So what are you asking God for? Write it out. The Bible says make the vision plain. You can run with it. Write it out. Pray over it. Grab scriptures over it. Cut out pictures related to it. And begin to lay hands on it and pray over it. Pray over it. Is it a business? 
Is it a ministry? Is it writing a book? Is it starting something new? What is it? What about, is it a wayward husband that you hate, <laughs> that you don't want to be with? Go ahead, write out. Lord, I thank you that my man is this, my man is that, my man is this, and my man is all of that. And believe you receive in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for joining me.